Thank you for being on this video with me. My name is Rodney Constable. I am the president and founder of Simple Market Signals at SimpleMarketSignals.com. Today we will be doing technical analysis on the S&P 500 for Wednesday, May 20th, 2020. And for this analysis, we will be using StockCharts.com. That is the charting service that I use and pay for. And I will leave a link to their site in the description box below this video. Today we were up 1.67% on the S&P 500 and closed at 2971.61. The first chart that we're going to look at is a two-day, two-minute chart of the S&P 500. And what we can see here is after yesterday's late-day sell-off, we gapped up at the open today and then traded as high as the 2980 level on the S&P 500 and then kind of pulled back from there. And as we see here, closed kind of in the middle of today's trading range, minus the gap up, of course, and finished at 2971.61. The next chart that we're going to look at is a six-month chart of the S&P 500, where each candlestick represents one day of trading. The orange line is the 200-day moving average, which is sitting right at 3,000 on the S&P 500. So the next upside challenge, the next Thing the S&P 500 is going to have to conquer if we're going to continue to go up is to get above the 200-day moving average and to start to close above the 3,000 level. And as we can see here, the earnings for calendar year 2020 are now setting at about $129 per share on the S&P 500. So I ran a little math here, and at the 3,000 level on the S&P 500, that would give us a price to earnings ratio of 23.26 based on full year earnings. So the entire calendar year earnings per composite share for the S&P 500 right now, based on analysts' estimates, is setting right at $129 per composite share. Once we get to this 3,000 level, and we're not that far away from it, but once we get to 3,000 based on full calendar year earnings, that gives us a P.E. of over 23 on the S&P 500. That is not a bargain by any stretch of the imagination. So the question is, can we continue to just power forward here, right? We've had a pretty good week. Um, you know, in, in the last, you know, five trading sessions have been pretty strong here coming off of that 2766 intraday low that we set just five trading sessions ago. So, you know, can we continue to power forward? Can we just jump right above this 200-day moving average and get above this 3,000 level and continue to go higher? And as a lot of people are suggesting, you know, perhaps have uh, all-time highs by the end of the year, it's completely possible based on the amount of liquidity that the Fed has shoved into the system. But you know, one of the questions that I have in my mind is, you know, will the next 400 points on the S&P 500 be as easy as the last 400 points? My gut says no, but only time will really tell. The next chart that we're going to look at is a three and a half year chart of the S&P 500, where each candlestick represents one week of trading. And the blue line is set at 3,000. And as we can see here, we've only had 21 weekly closes in the entire history of the S&P 500. We've only had 21 weekly closes above 3,000 as of today. So, you know, you can see them here and uh, that's it, guys. So we're getting into a rare spot here where we're asking the market to go higher and higher on earnings that are going to be at least, based on analyst estimates, at least 20% lower than what they were for calendar year 2019. So, you know, the only way that can happen mathematically is if we as investors are willing to pay more for a dollar of earnings than we have for quite a while. So it's multiple expansion, guys. It's not earnings increases. It's multiple expansion that will continue to drive this market forward. So just be aware of that that uh, we're starting to get into, at least from an index standpoint, we're starting to get into some lofty P.E. ratios on the S&P 500. The next chart that we're going to look at is a three-year chart of the S&P 500, where each candlestick now represents one month of trading. And as we can see here, we've had four months in the entire history of the S&P 500 where we've closed above 3,000. One, two, three, four. And of course, this is the month of February where we hit the peaks and then closed beneath that. So we've had one, two, three, four. That's it, guys. Four months 
in the entire history of the S&P 500 that have closed above 3,000. Okay, a quick refresher on the simple market signals, weekly signals, and how they can help you. The signals are green, yellow, and red. The green signal is the best risk-reward ratio for equity investors, and what you're going to find is that the stock market makes most of its upward progress when the signal is green, okay? The worst risk-reward ratio signal for equity investors is when the signal is red, and what you're going to find is that bear markets and the worst downturns in the stock market happen when the signal is red, like during the 07 through 09 bear market, as we see here. So again, the best risk-reward ratio signal for equity investors is when the signal is green, and the worst risk-reward signal for equity investors is when the signal is red. Thank you for watching today's video. Before you leave, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Please give me a thumbs up on this video and check out my other YouTube videos. I have a lot of great videos on my YouTube channel. And if you would like to learn more about how Simple Market Signals can help you in both up and down markets, you will want to watch these videos that are linked in the description box below this video.